Strange Real History, helping fans old and new understand the in-game lore from the Ace Combat series. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Enjoy! Imagine yourself in this situation. The year is 2020. You are an Aurelian soldier stationed within one of the nation's cities. It has been a few days since the nation of Liasath has declared war against Aurelia. So far, Liasath has already occupied some of the northern territory. But you and your fellow troops are determined to push the invading force out of Aurelia. Right now, you are preparing to head to your assigned location on the other side of the city. Suddenly, you hear a low rumble coming from the sky. The troops begin to talk on the radio, saying they hear the noise too. Suddenly, the massive fortress in the sky disappears. Witnessing this, do you retreat to live and fight another day? Or stay and risk getting vaporized by Liasath's superweapon, the Gleepnir? I think this calls for a little history lesson. The Gleepnir is a large Liasathian airborne fortress that was deployed shortly after the Liasath Civil War. Under the direction of Diego Gaspar Navarro, the Gleepnir was designed to overwhelm the enemy with its heavy firepower. Due to its immense size, the Gleepnir was developed as a flying boat because there weren't any runways big enough to allow it to land or take off. This behemoth flew with three signature weapons during the Aurelian War optical camouflage, the shock cannon, and shock wave ballistic missile. Optical camouflage, aka retro reflective projection technology, is a type of camouflage that conceals the Gleepnir through refraction of light. The technology takes in the background of the fuselage. Then, it takes the information and projects the background behind the Gleepnir across the surface of the fuselage. This makes the aircraft nearly invisible to the naked eye. Not completely invisible, because the aircraft could be tracked if someone noticed any visual distortions in the sky. Gleepnir's optical camouflage was able to render enemy radar and missile tracking ineffective. However, this advanced technology had its limitations. Even when the Gleepnir's camouflage was active, it was still vulnerable to enemy blind fire. The system would fail if it received too much damage. While the Gleepnir could not maintain its optical camouflage while firing its weapons, its stealth allowed it to surprise the Aurelian military and deal great damage when they least expected. The shock cannon is the weapon you saw during the intro of the video. The shock cannon was a Maison-based air-to-ground weapon powered by a particle accelerator located inside the aircraft. For those of you who aren't familiar, a particle accelerator is a machine that uses electromagnetic fields to propel charged particles to very high speeds and energies. The Large Hadron Collider located near Geneva is the best real-world example of a particle accelerator. But the Hadron Collider is a synchrotron particle accelerator which accelerates the charged particle around a fixed closed loop path. Instead, the Gleepnir uses a cyclotron particle accelerator, which accelerates the charged particle in a spiral path. It accomplishes this feat by using a combination of high-frequency alternating voltage, two hollow D-shaped sheet metal electrodes called Ds, and two electromagnets. Here is how it works. I am not a physicist, my explanation on how a cyclotron works is going to be very general and a lot of the details are going to be left out in this video. I will leave a link to the wiki page that goes into more detail on how it works if you guys are curious. Anyways, onto the presentation. The particle is placed into the center of the gap between the Ds. 
the voltage is applied and creates an oscillating electric field that accelerates the particle. Each time the particle passes to the other D, the polarity of the voltage reverses. This causes the particle to increase its acceleration and move in a larger radius circle, hence the spiral path. Once the particle approaches the rim of the D, it exits through a small gap and hits a target located at the exit point, causing a reaction. Just before the cyclotron charges the particle, the disc-shaped device on the undercarriage spreads a cloud of explosive gas dubbed meson fuel. The meson fuel is then ignited by a directed meson discharge from the cyclotron, resulting in anyone within the gas-covered area to be vaporized. The shockwave ballistic missile, or SWBM, was a special long-range ballistic missile. Similar to the shock cannon, each missile carried its own disposable cyclotron particle accelerator and meson fuel. The meson fuel would be dispersed once the missile reached its target. Similar to the shock cannon, the cyclotron did its job, ignited the fuel, and caused a massive energy explosion. The shock wave spreads in a horizontal motion, destroying any aircraft flying at high altitudes. However, as a result of air pressure differences, the blast wave will not have any effect at low altitudes. The Gleipnir was deployed in Aurelia shortly after the destruction of Gander, a prototype version of the Gleipnir. The Gleipnir was able to conquer almost all of Aurelia within 10 days thanks to its superior firepower and stealth capabilities. Out of all of the captured Aurelian cities, the city of Santa Elva would become the Gleipnir's base of operations since the city had a large river running through it. There was only one base in southwestern Aurelia that hasn't fallen under their control, Aubrey Base. As long as Liasath was able to take over Aurelia's last base of operation, they would have full control over the nation. On day 11 of the invasion, a small squadron of bombers and fighters was sent to bomb Aubrey Base. However, Aurelia still had a small air force and sent Gryphus Squadron to intercept and destroy the bombers. Gryphus Squadron was successful and all B-52 bombers were destroyed. This defeat surprised Liasath's Central Command and they realized that they needed to get rid of Aurelia's remaining air force. Not too far from the battle, the Gleipnir received orders from Navarro to decimate Gryphus Squadron. While Gryphus Squadron was celebrating their victory, they were immediately attacked by an SWBM. Only three fighters survived the surprise attack. But Aurelia continued to fight on, and they pushed southwards, taking back Puna Base and Port Patterson. Soon, Aurelia would gather their forces for an attack on Santa Elva, but the Gleipnir was still a major threat to the Aurelian forces. A large Aurelian fleet was sent to search and destroy the Gleipnir located near Terminus Island. While the fleet continued its search, the Gleipnir deactivated its optical camouflage and used its shock cannon to vaporize the Aurelian Third Fleet. While the Gleipnir proceeded to destroy the remaining Aurelian fleet, Gryphus I appeared. Gryphus I successfully disabled the Gleipnir's optical camouflage system and its SWBM launch ports. The Gleipnir gained altitude and escaped to Santa Elva in order to receive repairs. But the attack on Santa Elva came sooner than expected. The Gleipnir was still undergoing repairs. The only viable weapons were its AA and SAM sites. Gryphus I continued to pummel the Gleipnir with missiles and soon destroyed all onboard AA and SAM sites. The Gleipnir appears to be finished. But the commander of the Gleipnir, Captain Frank Burlington, did not accept defeat and somehow managed to flip the Glipnir upside down with the intent to fire the shot cannon on Gryphus I. His plan failed. The inner systems failed and the Gleipnir plunged into the Lenal River. Some of the crew survived the crash and were taken prisoner. The Gleipnir was destroyed. The news reached Liasath High Command in Aurelius' capital, Griswold, 
and the capital was fortified and protected by the Maison Cannon. But Navarro did not stop with the Gleipnir. He had other plans. Following the destruction of the Gleipnir, Navarro ordered his scientists and engineers in Liesath to use the battle data acquired from the airborne fortress and create the XFA-33 Fenrir. The Fenrir would utilize an improved version of Gleipnir's optical camouflage, a miniature SWBM, and a new microwave weapon. The Fenrir has amazing capabilities, but just like the Glipnir, it would be no match for the Southern Cross. If you like this video of Strange Real History, please intercept and destroy the like and subscribe button if you wish to see more Strange Real History videos. As always, my name is Saluda Seversoul, and I'll see you next time. Soul out.